the Arizona Daily Stars Match Play Video Extra, brought to you by Fry's Food Stores. It's the Friday evening edition. I'm Star Sports Editor Ryan Finley, here with Daniel Burke. Daniel, big day of golf today. We winnowed the field from 16 down to 8, and uh, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't start with Sergio Garcia and Ricky Fowler. Heck of a match today with a little bit of intrigue. Tell me all about it. Certainly the story of the day uh, was Ricky Fowler and Sergio Garcia, and it happened on the seventh hole. And our, our photographer, Mike Christie, was there for it all and kind of relayed it back to me, and then I, I since have seen replays. But essentially what happened is on, on, on six, uh, Sergio Garcia's ball found a sprinkle head, and there was about 50 bees in his way, and he sure. dropped the ball a couple times, and it took forever, and he, he felt bad about holding up play and making Fowler wait. So they go to se- they have the hole, they go to seven, and uh, they make it to the green. Fowler's about 18 feet away. Mm-hmm. Uh, Garcia's about seven feet away. Ricky's getting ready to putt, and Sergio says, you want to have the hole? Mm-hmm. And uh, Ricky said, what? He said, do you want to have the hole? And, and Fowler said again, what, 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 what's that? Yeah. He said, do you want to have the hole? Yeah. Sure. And which, you know, never happens. I mean, you know, we've never seen that. You don't give up a, a 17 footer, especially when you're inside mm-hmm. that at seven feet. Uh, but he felt bad. He said he didn't want to have a, you know, after the round, he said he didn't want to have a guilty conscience about it. And he wanted to kind of wipe it out. And so Fowler said, okay. And they went on to eight. Um, you know, Sergio birdies eight, mm-hmm. goes three up, but then ends up blowing it. Uh, Fowler with an unbelievable shot on 18 from 99 yards out, gets it to four feet, birdies, uh, and eliminates Sergio Garcia. And it was just uh, an unbelievable match with a, a huge quirk in the middle of it that, that we'll be talking about for a while. And right now, Ricky Fowler was a 14 seed in his own bracket. Now he's advanced to the round of eight. He has to be the story of this tournament right now. I certainly think so. And, and when you talk about the uh, you know the galleries that he, that he draws and the amount of fans that are here to see him, and he kind of even said, I don't think he you know realized what he was saying, but he said, yeah, when I play you know he plays Jim Furyk tomorrow, U of A grad, and he said when I play him, hopefully the galleries will be 50-50, which who who was the last guy to have a 50-50 gallery with Furyk here, and he probably will, mm-hmm. if not a few more, because there's a ton of Ricky Fowler fans out here, and you know he missed the cut in Phoenix uh, earlier this month. He's missed three straight cuts actually mm-hmm. and uh, he said you know I came in here not playing very good golf at all and I just kind of wanted to give myself something to feel good about well makes it to Saturday and he's given himself something to, to feel good about and now Fowler versus Furyk on, on Saturday I think we would have taken that before the tournament in a heartbeat you know but I feel bad for Sergio Garcia he's a guy who has sort of a perception problem on the tour and has had it for years today he does something that's pretty dang nice and he's getting killed for it. Yeah, well, you know, someone on the golf channel said it, it was nice, but it was wrong. Yeah. And uh, that's he, the guy can't win. Yeah. And the perception problem that he has has been brought on a lot by himself. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, I, we've talked about this, but when you take on Tiger Woods mm-hmm. in a public setting, which he has a couple times, you're not going to win that. Right. And, um, you know, so he does try to do something nice. He was very gracious in defeat afterwards, mm-hmm. said he didn't regret it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he, and he would have if he would have won today and he did not. Uh, give Ricky that putt. He said he would have felt bad. Yeah. So, you know, you ha- you know, you don't want to. You can't tell someone how to act. Mm-hmm. And if he would have felt bad, he would have felt bad. So, you know, he he feels good, but he feels like a loser. <laughs> I'm just ticked because I picked him to win to win the whole tournament. And join the loser party over <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like a U of A basketball fan. No, I feel like the officiating has cost my guy the tournament. <laughs> oh, ouch! <laughs> <laughs> kind of a kind of a bloodbath today for people who have had success in this tournament before. Uh, Matt Kuchar and Hunter Mahan both eliminated. Uh, those were two guys who had mastered this this format over the years. Uh, what happened? Yeah, Hunter Mahan was eliminated in, in 21 holes by Houdini. I mean, Graham yeah. McDowell, uh, who we should call Houdini because this guy has been unbelievable. He was he was three down with three to go in the first round against Gary Woodland, wears, wins on 19. Two down with three to play yesterday, wins in 18, and then today goes 21 and eliminates the 2012 champion and just never has the lead. Yeah. I mean, he, but it just – Pulls it out when he has to. And then on the other hand, Matt Kuchar, who loses to my guy, Jordan Spieth. And Spieth just called uh, Matt Kuchar, which I love, the smiling assassin, uh, eliminates him in 17 holes. And it was it was funny. Just before we came out here, uh, the two, McDowell and, and, and Spieth, had an um, exchange as they were. One was w- walking into the interview room and one was walking out. And McDowell, who's played extra holes two out of three days and gone 18 the other day, said to Spieth, man, is it tough to play only 15 holes every day? And he said, I played 17 today. He's like, ooh, 17, you know, and just kind of joked with him there. But uh, they're doing it in different styles, Spieth and and McDowell, but certainly two big names, two more big names that are through, and they they knock out two of the the guys, Kuchar and Mahan, who've just played unbelievably well here. So 
Um, I think those are two guys to watch. And you got to think McDowell, you know, maybe this is his tournament because, it, you know, he's, he's gotten through three days and hasn't played all that well. And it, maybe it's, you know, a thing of destiny. And then Spieth is just kind of rolling. He plays Ernie Els now uh, tomorrow, which is kind of a fascinating matchup. Uh, Four-time a majors winner in Ernie, who's kind of done it all and been everywhere against the guy, Jordan Spieth, who when he was just in there in the interview room, he had his finger over the uh, microphone and he mm. kept turning it off and on on accident. Mm, yeah. And the technician came up and told him what he was doing. He said, sorry, this is my first time in here. Yeah. And, you know, he's not used to this stuff, but he's going to be because he is a great player. Ernie Els is a guy who has not been playing very good golf all week, but still manages to advance through. You'd have to think that he's going to be sort of the, the old guy, emotional pick going forward i mean i know ernie els is still one of those bold face names in the sport of golf absolutely and, and I, you got to figure he'll draw a pretty big crowd tomorrow you know we we've joked a lot this week about the quote that seems like every golfer has given yeah. you can shoot a 67 and go home and you can shoot a 71 and make it to the quarters mm -hmm. and els is kind of the picture of that you mm -hmm. can shoot a 71 and make it to the quarters because he hasn't played all that great and if he would have played a couple different guys if he would have been matched up with spieth earlier mm -hmm. or some of his other guys jason day that are rolling he'd be out of here louis used days but instead he's kind of gotten matched up with some people that have labored too and he's pulled out some matches and, he, and here he is mm -hmm. so but at some point you got to kick your game into gear or else you'll be going home um, and if Spieth continues to, to play the way that he has and Ernie continues to play the way he has then we know how that match is going to go but if Ellis can kick it up a gear then it should be a great one sure another American who was uh, knocked out today is Bubba Watson uh, sort of the the no-name guy in this group right now Victor Dubuisson takes him out today it's uh, Bubba's a guy who, you know, when he's good, he's really good. And when he's bad, he's terrible. Yeah, and I'm just going to call him Victor, by the Victor way. I'm going I'm to give you the last name there. But, no, I mean, we kind of have seven big names in Victor. Yeah. Uh, but he's ranked number 27 in the world, and this mm -hmm. guy is not a fluke by any stretch. But uh, And Bubba played okay today. But you look at the guys that Victor has uh, taken out. Five bogeys. For Bubba today, though. Yeah, but he but he still battled. Yeah. They got to 17, 18, and it wasn't like he got boat raced, as you like to say. So he, you know, he battled and he had some nice holes. Um, but you know, he's out, and you know, our Greg Hansen has talked a lot about kind of the mental exhaustion of Bubba winning last week and then going three days in. So we kind of felt like maybe this was coming. Mm. Uh, so it, it comes a little early, and and he's going home. Yep. And to Victor goes the spoils. I've been waiting all week to say that, people. Anyway. That'll wrap it up from our Friday night edition of the Arizona Daily Stars. It's Friday already? Yeah, Friday. It's wow. crazy. I know. The Arizona Daily Stars match play video extra brought to you by Fry's Food Stores. For Daniel Burke, I'm Ryan Finley saying see you tomorrow. Try this matchup. Low prices and faster checkout. You can count on it at Fry's.